welcome back. When I set up the problem, I described this simple problem of fin heat transfer. This is typically um, a simple extension coming from a base and we wanted to find out given some data, given some historical data of the dependence of theta on theta b, m and x, how can you generally set a function. This is sort of a trivial task which is close to the task that we took up in the initial weeks of this course. Okay. So, I showed you the actual data also. So, this had a thousand data points and you had a variation of theta b, m and x and the output here given was theta. Now, of course, the simplest structure when you have such heterogeneous data By heterogeneous data, I mean that it is not all theta b, it is not all m and it is not all x. You actually have three different physical quantities. One is one physical quantity which is temperature, another is some physical parameter and the third is location and you want to combine these three and you want to get theta as output. The obvious structure to use here is a very simple artificial neural network. Okay. Now, I am going to do something given the simplicity of the problem. Actually, this is probably the best thing to try. When you have some such simple problem, uh, engineering practice over the last several years shows that simply try one hidden layer. Okay. We have not done any ANN examples so far. I am going to show you this as a very simple example just use one hidden layer and see how well it does. Only if it does not do well should you ask add more complex structures especially when you are dealing with ANNs. Okay. Um, so, if I have this as a hidden layer, we will also do something like change the number of neurons in the middle. So, let us say a few neurons are here. This is the input layer, the hidden layer and this of course, is the output layer. So, we will keep some such structure and try to see how well it fits these 1000 data points. Okay. So, we are going to try that. Now, I am going to use MATLAB for this case. Um, I know that throughout the course people have been asking for Python. It is actually fairly straightforward to do this with Python. But the MATLAB uh, implementation especially of a simple artificial neural network is very, very powerful. I would very strongly recommend it especially if you are doing engineering practice. This works extremely well. Of course, it is not very hard to program this within Python also within either TensorFlow or Keras or whatever it is that uh, you are using currently. There is another reason for me to use MATLAB. It has a very nice graphical uh, input. So, it has a very nice GUI. Uh, the interface is very nice. Also, I have found surprisingly th during the running of this course itself that it can do several things that are actually quite hard to do with uh, TensorFlow. We are not going to see examples of that today, but it can do uh, several things. It also has a few functionalities that uh, TensorFlow does not have because TensorFlow is not bothered about a single hidden layer anyway. They have built it specifically for deep networks, not for shallow networks of the sort that I am showing. So, my lesson that I would like to point about here is in case you have access to MATLAB, the biggest problem with MATLAB of course, is that it is not open source and it is not free. Okay. But to the extent that we have access uh, to it uh, during the uh, duration of this course, please do try it. You will find it surprisingly good at many tasks, even for deep learning tasks. I have found surprisingly good performance with MATLAB. Uh, it is actually quite impressive. Okay. So, here is what we are going to do. Um, I have called my file fin historical data dot xlsx. Okay. Um, so, let us run our code very simply. I have called my code create network. We are here and I have written out the data in uh, XLS read format. Basically, this reads our input data, the XLS, uh, so the Excel file that I showed you. Now, the data is read, 
we would like to label the inputs and outputs separately. The first three labels, the first three columns remember were the inputs and the next column was the output. So, this is not a very complex code, uh, I need not have actually shown this at all. Now, this thing here nn start actually starts the neural network GUI. Okay. You can do it without the GUI, but for demonstration especially in a video, I find it particularly convenient to do this. This is one other reason with that we are trying to show this within MATLAB rather than Python or anything. Okay. So, suppose we start. So, you will see this, uh, this is actually an old toolbox, MATLAB now has a deep learning toolbox that does far uh, many more things much like uh, TensorFlow or anything else. Um, so, now we are going to use the fitting app within this. So, uh, please see this, so the general structure that is being used within the fitting app is of course, you have one input uh, hidden layer and directly the output layer okay, which is sitting there. Okay. Now, it asks for inputs. Uh, in fact, if somebody is interested, you should probably make an interface of this sort for TensorFlow or something of that sort, just so that beginners can actually easily get into a problem. Okay. So, I am going to give x as input, y as output. Okay. Now, please see here, within MATLAB, they have a default set of values for splitting the data as training, testing and validation. Uh, all of you would have seen this during the earlier weeks, whenever you have data, you use training data in order to get your parameters, the validation data in order to get your some of your hyper parameters and the testing data in order to finally, report how good or bad your results were. Okay. Okay, so, now it is asking for the number of hidden neurons. Now, what I am going to do is, uh, you might see on your screens that the current number of hidden neurons, this is in the very first layer are set to be 10, we will leave it as it is, okay. we will leave it to be 10 hidden neurons. Okay. So, currently you have input 3, hidden 10 and the output layer is just one output. Okay. So, I will leave it here, we will change it a little bit later just to see what the effect is. Okay. Now, uh, here is one other place for a single uh, hidden layer that MATLAB wins over, it asks for a training algorithm. Now, remember all we have been using so far is gradient descent, one or the other version of gradient descent. Okay, if you check the options here, there is something called Bayesian regularization which we have not done, nor have we done scaled conjugate gradient, nor have we done Leeuwenberg Marcot. Now, Leeuwenberg Marcot algorithm works very well if you have like a single layer and your loss function is a least square loss function, which is basically what we want to use for our problem. I have all these predicted values, what would be our loss function? It would be our least square loss function, because it is a regression problem and not a classification problem. Okay. If you try gradient descent on the current problem, A you will find that you will have to of course, normalize the inputs, which we have not done. You might notice that all the columns that we had as input and output were not normalized. When we did the linear regression problems, you might remember that when we did not normalize, we had lots of trouble with gradient descent. Whether you use gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent, Adam etcetera, typically they will be much slower on this problem than Leeuwenberg Marcot for this problem. Okay. So, I will just do the training here and you will see that within the a few seconds, it has actually fully trained this simple network. If you write a code within Python, my suspicion is that um, gradient descent will actually work a little bit slower than what MATLAB did even for this. Okay. So, you notice a few things that have been reported. Remember the statistical measure called R, which shows you the amount of correlation. Let me just show you the correlation here. This is normalized correlation. You will see that uh, the output is matching really, really well. If it is a straight line, it basically means that your output is actually matching very well. That is your predicted output versus the actual output is marrying, uh, matching very, very well. If you plot the hi error histogram, you will see that there is a, the error here is of the scale of 0 0.009, etcetera, etcetera. You will see that a lot of you in fact find a nice Gaussian. This is a uh, very nice example of central limit theorem and what we have been talking about. 
even the errors in the prediction of the neural network are arranged very nicely as if they were from a Gaussian. If time permits, I will show you how to use an inverse problem using this idea that the error would be distributed as a Gaussian probably later this week. You can combine neural networks with uh, Bayesian MLE map that Dr. Ganapati discussed in the previous weeks also very nicely. If time permits, I will do that. Um, so, this is just as an example that the error, the answer was not exact, but you do have a very nice uh, error a plot, uh, error is quite low. Okay. So, error you will see is around 3 to 3 into 10 to the power minus 6. Now, whenever you train, you look for a few things. Remember our overfitting and uh, regularization and uh, uh, discussions. You will see that training error is around 3 into 10 to the power minus 6. This is the mean square error. You will also see that the validation and the testing error are round about the same of the same order of magnitude. When that is the case, we can kind of assume that we do not have too much variance problem okay, and we do not have overfitting etcetera. So, we are reasonably ok. You will also see that uh, the correlation is extremely high which means 10 neurons for this problem is actually pretty good and 10 neurons is nothing as you know from our CNN cases. Uh, so, with 3 inputs and 1 output you can actually fit it very well just using 10 neurons. Okay. Now, suppose we want to change our number of neurons and we bring it down to 2. Okay. Remember that the mean square error in the previous case was of the order 10 power minus 6 okay. and if I go here and I train again, you will see that the mean square error has actually gone up. Even though the correlation is still pretty good, what you notice now is the errors have gone up in magnitude. If we plot the error histogram, you will see that it has come down by a couple of decimal places. So, reducing the number of neurons even though you have only very few weights right now, it still looks a little bit like a Gaussian, but you will see that the corresponding errors have actually gone up. Okay. So, if we come here. Um, and let me go back and instead of 2, suppose I use 20 and I train this network. You will see that the error is extremely low now. It has now gone to the order of 10 to the power minus 7. Luckily, still the training and the testing errors are of approximately of the same size. So, is the validation. So, you know that we have not yet overfit the problem. So, this is a simple example of a neural network. Um, if you actually want to use this toolbox, uh, let me show you an example here. You can save this network as net. Okay. Um, so, you will notice here. So, this is a very simple example of what can be done with neural networks. We had some uh, data set with a thousand points, but we did not know the physics. Okay, we will pretend that we did not know the physics, but we had a lot of historical data and we saw that we could easily fit it using a neural network. Um, now, this has several uses as I said it can be used as a surrogate model, it can be used for inverse problems uh, etcetera. Uh, in the next video, we will see a little bit of a more complex problem. Thank you.